Hey guys, how's it going? DragoX35 here, and we're trying this for the 50th time. Each time has been interrupted by either me playing really badly, or someone coming in talking to me about some random thing, or the fan in my room being loud and making squeaky noises and stuff, so... Anyways, this is the Dark Souls Let's Play. This is my new Let's Play. And, yeah, so this is a game where it's an RPG. I keep saying MMORPG on the other recordings. Uh, anyway, so this is a RPG where you take the role of a undead called the Chosen Undead. That, well, I guess he's technically not called that, but that's like his title or something. Uh, anyway, so your goal, I don't know what it is. I tried figuring it out like 5 billion times and I still don't know. Uh, it has a story to this game, but oh well. Anyway, so basically the set goals of this is for me to help you guys get through the game. Uh, basically what it is, how I'm going to be doing it, if you haven't seen the video of the update. Basically how this will go is I will show you everything I did to... I did so that you can get through this game a lot easier. Of course, it's not going to be exactly like how I do it. It's going to be showing off some things that make this a lot easier and help you get through that... You don't have to, you know, be surprised too much. Uh, so yeah, basically just helpful tips that help you get through the game. Uh, so anyways, let's go over the stats really quick before I actually go into the class. Uh, so yeah, level is just your regular level. You can level that up at any time. Well, you don't level that up. You level up uh, one of the other things under level. And then you basically, that's how you would raise your level. Uh, if you're going to do anything with PvP, which is player versus player, then you're going to not want to get over 120. I believe that's what it was. If you're not going to do anything with 120 or PvP, then don't worry about that. Uh, anyway, so Vitality, you want to... Uh, vitality is your life bar. It's a big red bar. Or, well, it's going to be small at the beginning. It's going to get bigger. It's a red bar that indicates your health. How much damage you or how much damage you could take before you die or something or whatever. I don't know how to explain health apparently, but you know how close you are to death basically. Uh, attunement, if you are playing anything of the classes of Sorcerer, Pyromancer, or Cleric, who uses Miracles, Fire Magic, I think I said, or Fire Spells, my bad, or Sorcery, then you might want to raise that up because Attunement allows you to get the capability of equipping more spells depending on how high your attunement level is. If you have 10, I believe you can equip 1, and 12, and 14, then so and so. But of course, I don't like how they play, so we're not going to bother with that in this playthrough. Next up is Endurance, and for some reason I'm not on Busy. Thanks for showing me that. Uh, anyways, that was kind of silly. Uh, so, uh, gosh darn it. Anyways, Endurance. That is how much we can guard or keep guarding from attacks. Uh, it lets us run. If we run out of, like, if we run out of stamina, of course, or endurance, we can't run how many times we can attack before whatever. Of course, it's not you. It's not you can attack eight times, but of course, it increases your bar so. Like, you'll see in-game what I'm talking about, but basically it helps you do a lot of stuff and carry a lot of more stuff, because if you carry a lot of stuff at the beginning, like a big old axe and a big old shield and heavy armor, your guy's going to be very slow, unless if you raise endurance, so. Good idea to raise that. Uh, I would say up to 40, but that's up to you. Strength is how heavy of a weapon we can carry. I believe it's also how heavy of armor and how heavy of a shield we can carry, but I could be wrong about the armor. Dex is for your spe 
fast speed casting, faster spell casting, I mean. And, uh, it that makes so you can deal damage, higher damage of bows. Also, you need it to carry certain weapons. Uh, anything else with dex? I don't know. <laughs> resistance is just resistance. I don't ever feel the need to increase it. I don't know what exactly resistance is, but it doesn't ever play too much of a big role to me. Uh, intelligence is for sorcery, so you can cast stronger sorceries and use them. Uh, if you try to use a higher sorcery without the right intelligence level, it doesn't cast. Or it's really weak or something, I don't know. As I said, I don't like the sorcery builds or feel. And faith is for miracles. You can cast higher base miracles, yada yada. Uh, and there is a difference. And Pyromancy, I think it kind of scales with both. I don't know. So yeah, we're going to be choosing the Warrior because I like how the Warrior plays. I am a more of a melee class, not really the magic-based stuff. So gifts, we have none. Goddess Blessing, which you can get a lot of those later on, so there's no reason to get it right now. Uh, if you really want to get, uh, if you really feel the need to get Goddess Blessing, I would recommend choosing the Cleric as the Cleric comes with a healing spell, it looks like. And that is way better than trying to use the Goddess Blessing, which is, I think it's one time. Like, you ha only have one if you choose it, so. Yeah, yep. Uh, Black Firebomb, which, uh, you only would use this to get rid of the first boss and then get his weapon. You don't really use it for anything else. Uh, Twin Humanities, like, at least through my playthrough, I haven't used Firebombs. Uh, Twin Humanity is just, if you feel like, I don't know what you really get for. I really never use it, or, I never get these because I can farm just regular Humanities, like, really quickly. Well, not quickly, but efficient enough where I never have to get this gift. Binoculars, you can get them very early on in the game, so you don't need to bother. And Pendant is something that is shown off in the DLC thing, but I don't know if technically if having this void set off the thing that lets you go into the DLC. Uh, I'm going to do that on my off time of not playing this, oh, of not doing the LP. To see if this would actually trigger that, but I'm not, I really doubt it's going to. Uh, next up is Master Key. Uh, this is what we're gonna go for, it lets you get into certain areas quicker. Uh, we pretty much need it for a few certain areas, and then it becomes useless after that, but it really helps out a lot. Tiny Beings Ring uh, increases your max HP by a little bit, that's all it does. And Old Witch's Ring lets you talk to a certain NPC, but there's no reason to get that. So yeah, Master Key. Physique, I haven't seen any difference, so I mean, there's the Physiques if you really want to see them, big head. But, you know, I haven't really seen any difference. And then we have hair, which uh, I'm just going to go for semi-long, sorry about that pause, I didn't mean to pause there. Someone, apparently I can't get left alone while I'm trying to do this, so sorry about that. Uh, and we're just going to choose this hair because it looks like Leon Sot Kennedy, which is one of my favorite players in Resident Evil. Uh, customization. I just want to see if there's eye color. No, no, nothing. Okay. So I'm going to leave you guys with this cutscene, and then after the cutscene, I will be back. In the age 
age of ancients. The world was unformed, shrouded by fog. A land of grey crags, arch trees, and everlasting dragons. But then there was fire, and with fire came disparity, heat and cold, life and death, and of course, light and dark. Then, from the dark, they came and found the souls of lords within the flame. Nito, the first of the dead. The Witch of Isolith and her Daughters of Chaos. Gwyn, the Lord of Sunlight and his Faithful Knights. And the furtive Pygmy, so easily forgotten. With the strength of lords, they challenged the dragons. Gwyn's mighty bolts peeled apart their stone scales. The witches weaved great firestorms. Nito unleashed a miasma of death and disease. Soon the flames will fade, and only dark will remain. Even now, there are only embers, and man sees not light, but only endless nights. And amongst the living are seen Carriers of the accursed dark side. Yes, indeed. The dark sign brands the undead. And in this land, the undead are corralled and led to the north. Where they are locked away to await the end of the world. This is your fate.
Okay, that took long enough. And apparently I'm standing in a spirit kind of thing, whatever. So first off, we need to go grab this dungeon key. And we saw our buddy Oscar. Oh, well, I guess he's not technically our buddy. But we really don't... I don't know how we know his name or how I know his name, but whatever. Of course, everyone's depressed because they're in prison or something. Who cares? And apparently someone got wrecked. <laughs> By where is he? There he is. By that big thing in there. Of course, we don't have to deal with that thing at the moment. Uh, strong attack is right trigger. Holding left and forward, or holding B and pressing forward on the left stick lets you go quicker. And right bumper lets you do weaker attacks. Holding the left bumper while you have a shield or anything that is dual wielding lets you guard. And if you don't have a shield or anything, it just does that. Fist pump. <laughs> uh, so yeah. This is a bonfire. Bonfires respawn enemies if you kill them. And if you sit at them, they heal you and refuel, refuel any of your sorceries and stuff. And it refills your SS flask that you get later on. It's not much of a spoiler. You get it like a second later. Um, not much to say. It doesn't refill random items, just sorceries, pyromancies, and miracles and SS flasks. So first off, before I go in that room, we look up and we see what killed or, well, something that's up there, the asylum demon. Which we saw under that, there was another one down there, but, uh, yeah, he's hanging out up there. Now, if I chose to kill him right now, we would get his weapon, which he's holding right now. But we're not going to do that, because I'm not going to sit here for 5 minutes, or a whole 20 minutes just attacking him. If you want to, then go ahead. You have to do it in the first time you're in there. If you leave after, then you get no weapon, so... Yeah. Uh, so you go and go get your shield because it told you to. Pressing start and right bumper lets you go into the equipment thing. There's a room here, but there's just this that teaches you how to do it. Uh, keep in mind if you do press start, uh, it doesn't pause the game. So you have to be careful where you're pressing start, otherwise you're going to die. Uh, for example, I can run, and I can still go into my menu as you can see right here. So that's a pretty neat mechanic that not too many games I know of do with. It's kind of annoying at times, but it's not too bad, so yeah. I kind of wish a little more games did that so it would be easier instead of having to wait for it to load up and stuff, but oh well. So there's our buddy Oscar, apparently he's sleeping in a cell. And uh, yeah, you go to the left, there's nothing there you can get. If you press B, you'll backstep. If you're holding B and that, you run, but if you hit B twice, you jump. Uh, also, if you're pressing forward and you hit B, you roll. And go over to the side, side, and back. So it's left stick plus B, just hitting a direction or whatever. Uh, so before we go and do a lot more with anything else, I'd like to talk about how this playthrough will go through after you open this course and it makes a shortcut. Make sure you open that otherwise you're gonna have an annoying time getting through stuff in here. So uh, basically I'm gonna go all the way to the boss and then that'll end the session and it'll start up the next thing and whatever so yeah. It seems like a weird thing, but oh well. Uh, so yeah. Now your first impression is just run upstairs, but if we have binoculars, we could tell there's a guy with an iron ball up there. So you would run up the stairs, turn around, and there you go. As long as you stick to the wall, you'll be fine. So here's our buddy Oscar, who apparently has been hit through the roof because he looks pretty damaged by... I don't know what science, but whatever. So yeah, that asylum demon up there. Well, it jumped down now. 
but that was after it wrecked him pretty badly. I guess. So let's see what Mr. Oscar has to say. Oh, you. You're now hollow. Thank goodness. I'm done for, I'm afraid. I'll die soon, then lose my sanity. I wish to ask something of you. You and I, we're both undead. Hear me out, will you? Well, if I have to. Regrettably, I have failed in my mission. But perhaps you can keep the torch lit. There is an old saying in my family. Thou who art undead art chosen. In thine exodus from the undead asylum, maketh pilgrimage to the land of ancient lords. When thou ringeth the bell of awakening, the fate of the undead thou shalt know. Well, now you know. And I can die with hope in my heart. Oh, one more thing. Here, take this. An Estus flask. An undead favorite. Well, thank you very much, sir. Oh, and this. Huh. Uh, if you're wondering why you need this key, if you were to go up the stairs right after the iron ball, or maybe if you didn't notice the iron ball but you went up the stairs anyway, is, uh, you would find a locked door. Now I must bid farewell. I would hate to harm you after death. So go now. And thank you. Huh. Okay. Uh, now here's something to point out before we actually move on with this. You can attack anything in this game, even NPCs. But if you attack an NPC, he usually will attack you. If you attack Oscar here, he'll just die and you'll get the items without having to talk to him. So keep that in mind, but you pretty much do not want to attack any NPCs except for one in particular and then near the end of the game. But we'll get into that near the end of the game, of course. Uh, so yeah, if we hit X, we can use the S flask or anything that's equipped it on the down part of that. Uh, also, if you use the directional pad, if you hit right, you just you if I could get that off my screen, you can switch to your other weapons that you have if you had anything equipped. Same thing for the shield. Uh, same thing for your miracles and pyromancies and sorceries if you had any in the upper one. And same thing for items if we had anything other than S plus. So yeah, if we go to a bonfire and rest at it, which I'll show now, and don't worry, we'll get done this area pretty quickly. I don't have a lot to explain after this area, but yeah. Oh yeah, another thing, he kills himself. I forgot to mention that. You don't, you can't see him kill himself, but he just died. Well, I don't think he kills himself. He. He either kills himself or he dies on his own, but either way you get 100 souls because he dies. And we'll never see him again. What do you mean, don't believe me? <laughs> Anyways, so these are undeads with swords. The only thing you need to really watch out for is they have an attack that where they just rapidly attack you for a lot of damage, so be careful of that. Uh, hitting Y lets you dual wield. There's no reason to do that. I mean, there is if you want to do more damage, but you leave yourself more vulnerable. Uh, pushing forward and left right bumper. It's uh, forward, what left stick and right bumper is a kick. Forward and right trigger is jump attack. Uh, I went through the whole game without knowing those two things, but it makes the game a thousand times more easier if you pick that up really quickly. Uh, there are certain cases where you won't be able to kick and you'll do a different animation. But we'll get into that when we pick up a certain weapon later on. Uh, and I don't know if I said this, but resting at bonfires revives enemies. The ones you killed. So, yeah. You can kill these guys, but if you go rest at a bonfire, you're going to end up just reviving them. So, they just swing a sword. Not too much to worry about. Uh, if you're a sorcerer, it's not too bad in this area. Uh, keep your shield up with these guys and if you're behind a guy you hit the right bumper or press and hold it you will do a backstab which that's how that works. Uh, also when you're falling you press or is it hold I don't know right bumper you will do a plunging attack which uh, let me show you what that looks like. If you drop off an edge and hit right 
bumper. Oops. One more time, and then if I can't do it, yeah, apparently I can't do it off that ledge. But he does like a downward strike, so yeah. And that's the thing about backstabs. Uh, basically, if you're if an enemy's attacking you and they're about to swing their sword, for this enemy, if he's about to swing his sword, when he's about to swing it, you have to hit the left trigger. If you want to parry, you hit the left trigger, and then he'll like put his hands back. Like you stun, and then you would hit right bumper, and then you'll do a frontal stab, which does a lot of damage too. So yeah, uh, if I can get it off on the first try, then we'll, then I'll show it off. If I can't, then I'll just kill him normally. Uh, basically, also another thing to keep in mind is you can circle strafe people. That's when you circle around people. If you ever play Legend of Zelda, that's what it's called. And that's basically how I killed a lot of my enemies. Uh, I don't think you could parry the shield, but you could parry the sword very well. And there we go. It kills them pretty much instantly. You see this a lot in PvP and stuff. And if anyone's curious, this door is locked. So. Yeah, that's a shame that's locked, but we can't do anything about it. Or can we? Just kidding. Uh, so here's the light, and remember that jumping attack? Alright, so here's something I need to tell you before we go in there, because if I go in there, he's going to break the platform if I stay up there too long. So basically, from what I've read, is if you do a jumping attack, and then you follow the jumping attack into a punching attack, it does a lot more damage, because it counts the jumping attack and punching attack damage. But if you just do a punching attack, like just fall off in right bumper, then you're not going to do as much damage, but you'll still do a decent amount, so I'd just say that. But I would stick to regular punching attack if I was you, but for me, I don't need to worry about that. Alright, so here's our buddy, the Asylum Demon. Apparently we missed something, I don't know. So his thing is, he likes to swing his hammer. Uh, the only thing you really need to know is you need to get behind him. Like, uh, his big fat butt, apparently. <laughs> uh, our shield should be able to hold the impact of his club very well. The only problem is if we run into these stupid faces that are around. But he's not too hard after to deal with. That's why the first time through the room you might not have any trouble. Uh, he will do hefty damage. If you need to heal, I would recommend using S Flask as it will heal you pretty much instantly. Uh, so yeah, just stay close to him. He doesn't... It's not too dangerous. It's when you get far away that he becomes dangerous. Oh yeah, if he flies in the air, just back off. And that's pretty much all you really have to do. I mean, it's not too much of a difficult boss. So there you go. And for that, we'll drink some Sunny D. Or yes, Blast. Which the things were blocking. Which you have to be careful about, too. Because if you're stuck in an item menu, you... I believe you can't attack. So yeah. So you can go back there and rest at the bonfire, but there's no reason to. We got the key to get out of here. Uh, last time I got the key, I didn't know what the key was for, so I was spending the whole time running around not realizing this was a door. So. And my fan is just in horrible condition right now. Good job. Go straight ahead. Yeah, these uh, messages do help you out a lot. There is this thing over here. If you go over there and you drop the... Uh, I think if you drop the demon hammer or whatever, you can get stuff. And there's other stuff you can drop there, but I'm not going to bother. There's nothing of importance that I can get from it. Like, for this playthrough, so just a reason for me to go over there. And let's go over here and see what happens. Only in the ancient legends it is stated that one day an undead shall be chosen. To leave the undead asylum in pilgrimage to the land of the ancient lords. 
Lordran. And there we go. We got token by a big raven slash crow to this place of Lord Lord Jorin, whatever it's called. And there's the bird hanging out up there. Good thing to know. Anyways, uh, before we end this, let's pillage this corpse for three humanities, which is pretty nice. Uh, when you get different items, they automatically equip onto this bar. And as I said before, you can switch between stuff, so yeah. But what will we do next? Well, that is for the next episode, so for right now, we're gonna rest at this bonfire. And then we will catch you guys later as. Well, this is the end of this session, so. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any questions about that first part, which I hope you don't need any help because it's pretty simple to do that. Most people can do that on their first try, then go ahead and leave it in the section down below and I will get back to you on that. Anyways, I will catch you guys later. This is DracoX55 signing out and have a good day. Oh, wrong button.